Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. We're going to jump into the campaign where adventure and glory await. Oh, they added flying creatures. I wonder if the Osimar can fly with their wings then. Hey, that's us. And our loyal steed. I make way coming through. Fetch a healer, quick. Okay, that could have been a little more gentle. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch. Make room, everyone. Step back. Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? Hmm. The wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? You hear the stern voice of an elderly man. But you're so weak, you can't even turn your head to look in his direction. I really like his portrait, too. Demons, prelate. We found him barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. But be careful if you're going to heal me. I, I am undead. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. Oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. The magic envelops you, but your pain lessens only slightly. That's a really cool touch. He cast inflict wounds on us. Uh, since we're undead, we need negative energy to heal. Weird that he was invoking Iomade's name when he cast it, but still, still a really neat touch. I won't give up that easily. Here, here! That's the Crusader spirit! My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there! Yes, you! Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful! Go and get Terendalev! Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. The lady raises her head in an affectation of surprise. I'll get her! Terendalev! Has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it before it's too late! Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. The old man leans over you. I'm Don Quixote. De La Mancha. That's the first I've heard of that name. Who are you, then? What's your business in the city? Maybe you should read more books. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He has been through enough already. Go on. I'll take care of him. <clears throat> All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom, but be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I. Not the defenders of this city. Muttering discontentedly, the old man walks off. Pry loose the grudging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. A beautiful silver-haired woman leans over you. Seems ageless, her face wholly unlined. A centuries-old sadness gleams in her eyes. The longer she speaks, the stronger her voice becomes. Thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks. But my work is not yet done. Who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of this city. Are you really a dragon? You don't believe me. 
Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. The woman lets out a melodious laugh. But what happened to me? I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. Where can I go? Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. All right, shouldn't need tutorials. Uh, one thing that Wrath of the Righteous added that Kingmaker did not have is a 360 degree camera. That's pretty neat. Wonder if that's gonna be implemented into puzzles. All right, so our quest, uh, sample the special festival drink, throw the dart at the target and hit the mannequin. It looks like our animal companion can level up. It has one hit point. <laughs> All right, so you select a class for your animal companion. Also, the way mounted combat works is when you're in combat and you take a hit, if you are mounted, your animal companion will take the damage for you. So basically, they add their hit points to yours. So I think making your animal companion as tanky as possible is the best course of action. All right, so you have the aggressor. Uh, companions with the most vicious nature are often called aggressors. Uh, they get power attack, bleeding strike, multi-attack, bleeding strike, bleeding strike, and bleeding strike. Looks like you get to select feats for them as well, so I'm sure you can get power attack down the line, even if you don't get it for free with this this class. Uh, the bully. Bigger than others of its kind. A bully is used to winning fights and displays dominance for its choice of mates, territory, or other privileges. Grip, bull rush, evasion, bullying thrill. And improved evasion. That one seems pretty good. Uh, bulwark, companions with the sturdiest skin, who can endure incredible amounts of suffering, are called bulwarks. So they get barding armor proficiency, sturdy. Bulwark gains damage reduction 2 at 4th level, and every 4 levels thereafter, it increases by 1. Loses evasion, gains devotion. Animal companion gains a plus 4 morale bonus on will saves against enchantment spells and effects. Then medium barding proficiency, they lose evasion. That might be good. Uh, Daredevil. Daredevil companions join the fray with graceful leaps or swooping dives, heedless of the danger. The art for acrobat. Gains a competence bonus on mobility checks equal to half its hit dice. Has evasion. Combat mobility. Devil may care. Ninth level, a Daredevil can't be flanked. Oh, that sounds good. Im improved evasion. Death touched. Whether the result of a partially successful attempt at revival, a strange blight, or repeated exposure to undead. Death touch companions are living animals with a trace of the undead. Somewhat like Dampiers. Hey. We can make him just like me. To give him negative energy affinity. Uh, he gets evasion, uh, one foot in the grave. At sixth level, a death touch companion gains a plus four morale bonus on fortitude saves against effects that could not normally affect objects or undead. A uh, multi-attack and improved evasion. Uh, for thematics, I'll probably go with this one. I think Bulwark is probably the best one so far. Uh, Racer. Some companions have uncanny speed, providing their masters with swift transport. They get fast movement, evasion, fast movement, multi-attack, and improved evasion. Uh, the Wrecker. Like on Rolly Pets, some companions have a tendency to destroy nearby objects while unsupervised, and the masters can channel these destructive impulses into an advantage in battle. They get Sunder Armor, Evasion, Devotion, and Improved Evasion. So I think if you're going a tank class, Bulwark is probably the best one. Uh, Bully is probably the best for my character. I'm going to go with Death Touched anyway. 
Even though I feel like we don't benefit from this at all. <laughs> Going this route. Really all you get is evasion. Uh, the fortitude saves. Multi-attack. And you don't even get improved evasion. <laughs> it's not a very good archetype. We're going to go with it anyway. Uh, Skill-wise, we'll go athletics and mobility, I think. Either mobility or trickery, but they're not trained in trickery, so it's not going to account for anything. And then feet-wise, since we do share hit points when we're mounted, I'm going to grab toughness for them as well. So total, that'll be plus six hit points between the two of us. And I do know that Don Quixote's horse's name is Rosinante, but we're going to name ours Bucephalus. After Alexander the Great's horse. Well, let's see, 13... Erastus. All right, works for me. Focus on the goal. I meant to Ready check that. Anything. Whoopsies. All right, well, let me mount it here. That's fine. All right, stranger. Nothing to say. How about Socio? So many happy faces. Days like this keep our hope alive. I'm going to talk to everybody before I do the uh, quest objectives. A Camellia? Grubby peasants and their grubby diversions. Why did I even bother coming? I was like, you don't know how to have fun. Orcus Worm. Now that's a name. Yes, yes, happy city day. And now step away, please. And I wish for Horcus Worm to be seen next to you. Ember. Happy city day, good people. Spare a coin for a hungry belly. He throwing up? Weird animation for that. A chest containing the festival attendees' weapons. Yes, yeah, so I'm assuming something's gonna happen. The fight's gonna break out. We're gonna have to get our weapons from that chest. Uh, Daron? Daron? Dairon? They call us a celebration. This is about a paltry imitation of what goes on in my mansion on a dull toil day evening. Sounds like he knows how to have too much fun. Anevia? Or Anevia? Everybody's letting their hair down. Everybody's drinking, having a good time. But the demon spies never let up. So that means no fun for me. Unless you enjoy your job. Sila. How dare you? Did Tyrande Love help you? Janna Aldori. I wonder if she's related to Jamandi. I've been a crusader five whole days already, and I love it. The future's gonna be grand indeed. Hmm. What are that foreshadowing? I'll go ahead. Uh, Ramian? On days like this, it's as if the war, does, war doesn't even exist. It doesn't like grant us peace. Arav Vashanil. That's quite the name. I have a feeling something terrible is going to happen. As usual. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Alright, let's talk to Tarendalev. This will ease your suffering. Then Holrun. A strange wound. Curse, perhaps. Do I have any effects? No? Huh. Alright, let's go punch this thing. I think that's everybody I can talk to, right? I'll check after this. Sock him one. Oof. <laughs> Bam. Right in the jaw. Ha ha ha. You call that a punch? Yeah, let me show you how it's done. I'm sorry, I have 20 strength. So I know that was a heck of a punch. Okay, it looks like we talked to everybody that's marked on the map already. Uh, let's go drink. Oh, I didn't talk to Curl. 
They should let us off to enjoy the festivities. Instead, we're digging ditches and training day in, day out. Well, the demons are at the gates. So you gotta, you gotta stay ready. I love a drink, me. Especially when the city's uh, footing the bill. What do you say? Another round? Doesn't look like it. Dragon. The next, bam, she was gone. What are you gonna do? Fight or flee? If flee is your plan, let me help you out. I've got a scroll here with a good protective spell. The halfling's armor is splashed with blood, and he's armed to the teeth. With a sword, a blade, and a hatchet on his belt, and a crossbow on his back. His voice sounds familiar to you. I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah, you have. You owe me your life. I'm the one who found you outside the walls and brought you inside to be healed. I see they patched you up. Good thing they did it before the attack, or else you'd have been done for. He looks you over. Uh, who's Discari? You must have got a good drubbing around the head, brother. Discari's a demon lord. The most fearsome enemy of all crusaders and all living things, come to think of it. Uh, what's the situation in the city? Who knows? Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. Place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks. Care to lend me a weapon? I'll try to fight the demons. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord, even. The halfling holds out the crossbow. Good luck. Try not to get eaten now. The halfling's words are drowned out by a terrible rumbling and the rustling by of countless tiny wings. Have at thee, demon. A mortal gnat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, I Behold the death I saw. The absence of an answer is an answer too. I was not expecting full-on cutscenes like that. The silver dragon Terendeleb, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. I'll make one adjustment to the sound real fast. Why is it 89? That's weird. Alright. Just so we don't miss any dialogue. Alright, can I mount you now? I am prepared. Alright. Fourth Bicephalus. Oh, holy mother of A small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. 
Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? The young woman in knight's armor studies the rocks intently, clearly trying to work out how to move them. I feel them all right. When say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendal have healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Spotting you, the knight reaches for a sheathed weapon. After scrutinizing your face momentarily, she raises her hand in greeting. How would I ask that? Oh, I need to turn the setting off so I don't see this. I'm going to just pick things blindly. I don't want to see the alignment of the uh, dialogue options. Uh, hold on. We're going to get you out from under there. Yeah, we failed. Darn. <laughs> you have to work hard to get the wounded woman out from under the rubble. At last, the knight stops to catch her breath and wipe the sweat from her brow. Ugh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm in Nevia Tiravade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. The woman feels her leg, then fishing a piece of twine from her pocket, she gets to work. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's Herald, with the Goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Asila's expression darkens. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabras will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Navia's eyes shift to you. I'm not seeking fortune, I'm seeking glory. So I don't like that option. My name is Don Quixote. De La Mancha. Good to meet you. Now, tell us all about yourself. Whoa, girl. Slow down. Exchanging names is enough for now. We don't have time to be swapping life stories. We need to find a way out of here. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far. Only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. Nevia Tully ties off the twine on her improvised splint, and leaning on a stick, calls herself to her feet. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Sila winks. I feel like I could offer Nevia a ride on my horse, so she doesn't have to walk on her on her broken leg. Alright, let's see what we're working with here. Alright, so I have a light crossbow still. Let's equip that. Engrave lucky bracers. Now, these bracers grant the wearer a plus one luck bonus to armor class and a plus one luck bonus to reflex, will, and fortitude saving throws. Then just some scale mail for five armor class. We do not need this equipped. That'll just hurt us. We'll keep that. Give this to her. There's a long sword, torch, short bow, and banded mail. Potion of shield of faith. Which is a pickpocket background. 
Let's read about that. Uh, Pickpocket adds trickery and stealth to the list of her class skills. She also gains a plus two bonus on initiative rolls. That's odd for a paladin. I'm sure it's just, it's for her background. She starts with dodge. I wonder if they did that so people are less inclined to pick a uh, monk or take a dip in monk with her. <laughs> and she also has shield focus. All right, cool. Well, that's what we're working with. Let's set up our formation. She will be our tank. How much health does she have? 13. Yeah, we'll just stack these two on top of each other since... They're mounted anyway. Hold the line. On receiving the attack command, the party members will move towards the enemy at a speed not exceeding the speed of the party member positioned at the front. That's super cool. You actually hold formation as you enter combat. That's awesome. Look, Horan put all the confiscated weapons in this chest. Take a look. Uh, maybe your thing survived the fall. Alright, let's see what we got. The Cold Iron Longsword. That doesn't bode well. Uh, let's give that to her. Book of Resistance we'll give to our main character. And I guess we'll use a short spear for now. If I hadn't gone Gendarm and gone Knight of the Wall, because I was tempted to do that, I'd uh, probably, instead of using a long spear, I'd use a trident and shield or a short spear and shield. I think that would look really cool uh, mounted on a horse. Baron de Lev's scale. A single silvery scale from uh, Terendelev's, Terendelev's body. It's warm to the touch. It seems to glow softly from within. You restore life to a deceased party member. A raised creature has a number of hit points equal to its current hit dice. Raised dead also removes the death store condition. A coming back from the dead is an ordeal. The subject of the spell gains. So it's just raised dead. I'll have to read all that. Cool. Basically, a raised dead scroll. Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party, not in the dark, or sorry, in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip a rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance, it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... when... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought, naively it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendelev, I can't wrap my head around it. The girl relaxes slightly. She keeps her hand on her sheathed weapon. Her self-control falters for a moment. She glimpses the fear beneath her mask of a perfect, a perfect placidity. She licks, her she licks her lips nervously. Uh, not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord. Not even Terendelev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendelev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now... Nevia <sighs> shakes her head. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Melia finishes Anevia's thoughts with ruthless precision. Tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. 
I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier. And I also possess some knowledge of magic. The girl gives an elegant shrug. Then she touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. Now what happened to this poor man? Who was he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. Isn't that what revive is supposed to fix? He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. You have a feeling she's standing right in front of us. Uh, Sila's eyes warily scan the area. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Nevi appears to the dead man's face. Yeah, we met him. He was in the square and we spoke to him. He's the one that said he had a feeling something bad was about to happen. Uh, do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? Yeah, the way she says that... I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't trust her. Uh, we need to keep moving. Must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. I heed the voice of the spirits. Your light wounds, which we can turn into object bond. Large person. Dismiss spell and spirit weapon enchantment. Put that over there. Uh, she's a little banged up. Let's go ahead. Eh, we probably need to waste that yet. All right, what is she rocking? Your light wounds, enlarge person. She's dexterity. She doesn't need this. We give that to her though, because she's strength based. But oh, she's fatigued. Okay. Let's see a buckler, a cold iron rapier. Amulet. It's not identified. I mean, undetectable alignment. Usually, this indicates that the character is enchanted or possesses an enchanted item that interferes with the termination of the alignment. I guarantee it's that. So, she is a shaman archetype. I'm not very familiar with the shaman. I'll look into her a little bit more off camera to get familiar with her class. Oh wait, no, it's going to change our formation. <gasps> Alright. Oh, nearly his body. And a masterwork dagger. Time's not waiting. I also mounted combat. The way it works is... You and your mount still both get an attack each. Uh, you don't count as a single entity for the sake of attacking. And I think it also works with sneak attacks. Uh, because since you're both attacking the same target, it counts as flanking. Save the last one for me. Have a crossroads. Uh, let's go to the right first. The heartbeat quickens. <laughs> Gold, uh, braces of armor plus one. Scorpion inflict light wounds. I come in handy for my character and horse. Actually, had I known that my I can make my horse undead, it probably would have been worth giving my main character more intelligence so I could use uh, or put points into use magic device. 
so I could heal my horse with uh, scrolls. Oh well, what the, what's done is done. And I don't think anyone benefits from that, so we'll hold off on that for now. Follow my lead. Our victory is certain. Rainbow Quartz and Flame Tongue. As it should be. We are the light. Uh, you don't need to be up front. You're squishier than everybody else. I right, then charge into the monitor lizard for me. I'll cut you wide open. Aw. Okay, I'm gonna call the episode here. In the next one, we will meet with Land the Man. And see if we can't escape uh, this dank catacomb from under the city. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.